that's a tremendous looking trophy. Hello and welcome to Platinum Display, your number one PlayStation podcast in the Oceanias. My name's Tim Blunt. Joining me, as always, Ashley Holdman. Hey Dylan, excited to be here. Another week of PlayStation. I reckon we're getting a um any sort of events coming into September. No. I think okay. there'll be a Gamescom. Okay. I don't think it, they've confirmed to have like a booth at Gamescom, but I'm sure they'll show it. It'll be something at opening night last. They didn't last year. Well, no, I guess they did at opening night last, but they didn't have any presence on the the floor. On the floor, no. Because mm. the, the rumors are, you know, as always, the rumors are back in full swing. There's a state of play coming any day now. There's a state of play. Probably. That's I'm pretty sure as soon as one ends, a new story is written that says there's state, a state of play, of play coming, soon. coming soon. Probably. That's the Maybe. tracks. Could be a thing. Evidence does state that's how they work. Yeah. <laughs> All right, PlayStation Plus Extra Deluxe Games August 2023 have been announced. It is a probably the best month, I think. I don't know. Maybe the, I don't think that's a hot take. Um, so the games that you are getting on your extra tier are Moving Out 2, Launch Day, Destiny 2, The Witch Queen, Lost Judgment, Destroy All Humans 2, Reprobed, Two Point Hospital Jumbo Edition, Source of Madness, Curse to Golf, Dreams, PJ Mask, Heroes of the Night, Hotel Transylvania, Scary Tale Adventure, Lawn Mowing Simulator, Landmark Edition, Spell Force 3, Reforced, Midnight Fight Express, and then on August 29th, Sea of Stars, Launch Day. And in the deluxe tier, Medieval Resurrection, which is the PSP version of Medieval 1, Ape Escape on the Loose, Pursuit Force, Extreme Justice. And obviously the reason I'm saying it's probably the best extra deluxe tier month is because you've got two launch day games included in, in your yep. selection here. We're moving out to NCS stars. Uh, what do you reckon? Best month for it? And anything else stand out there? Or any I mean, stuff you excited to... Probably from memory. <laughs> I mean, if you're chasing uh, like new release games, then probably. Like since, I don't know, Stray. Like... <laughs> Um, those would probably be the biggest launch day titles, so that's that's pretty cool. Um, the dreams, I guess, is kind of weird, seeing as it's one of the the uh, essential titles this month. You know, mm. so it just means, I guess, if you, you miss it, it, it'll you know, be. I mean, on if this. You, it'll be there if you don't redeem it this month, I guess. Yeah, that's the thing, I guess. So, it, why not just delay it a month? You know, would be my thing. It's I like, guess. hey, did you miss yeah. it? Guess what? It's on. You, you can get, get it this it month now, now everyone. Higher. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, lots of. So a couple of weird tie in games. <laughs> uh, well, they're not tie in games. They're just. They, they usually have a, some kids' games chucked some in. Some kids' games. The, you know, yeah. Two Point Hospital is a pretty good addition. Uh, Destroying Humans 2, you know, that's pretty cool. Uh, and then, yeah, that, that medieval game, that seems weird. weird Why? Edition. Haven't they got the remaster? You're saying it's a remake of the first game that came to PSP. Yeah. Then they've put the remastered version that everybody played up. And then now they've got this version as well. It's just all confusing. I don't know. Is Medieval Convoluted. on? That's why nobody liked Medieval. <laughs> <laughs> all I know is I have I just rechecked PSN profiles because I haven't for a couple of days. Um, my hope is that they add trophies for this too. Because <laughs> it means mm. I can get two versions of the Medieval Platinum. You know? That's good. I don't know if I don't think they've added the original Medieval as a PS1 classic, and I'm not sure if Medieval the remake is part of the extra tier. I couldn't see that anyway. So surely by now, I don't know. You reckon no one cares about it? That's why maybe they didn't add it. The thing is that uh, I don't. I tried googling it. There's not really. There's not really an easy. Oh, hold on. There is on the PlayStation website. That would work actually. Nope, they don't make it easy to look, do they? Oh, no, no, no. You can alphabetize. M. Oh, no, it's on there, apparently. Yep, there you go. See? Yeah, but for the hardcore, Ash, you know the differences. Yeah, this one has less buttons. Because <laughs> it was on the PSP. Correct. Exactly. <laughs> There's no camera control. It's all. It's only auto camera that's the exact You just difference. have to, have to yeah. make it work. Uh, I know we talked about it the other week, but is uh, Sea of Stars still probably the 
the best thing, you reckon? Or? Yeah, I think so. You know, looks very pretty. Looks like an old school Japanese RPG or JRPG. Um, looks like it'll take a long enough time to play. So that's not a great, <laughs> not great in that regard. But you know, also good. <laughs> you know, get a big lengthy game out there. I mean, before they delayed Wrestle Quest, all the reviews and stuff. Well, like, this game's 30 hours long. I'm like, what the fuck? No, that tracks. Because that, that, that demo that they had was, like, at least two hours. Yeah, I know, and but it was still, just a demo. I'm like, fucking hell. So a tiny slice. I want to play my wrestling game, but... I have all day. Fuck, <laughs> 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 yeah. All right. Uh, let's talk a little bit about something that I care about. Mark Cerny cares about. So I got this little article here from Eurogamer. Mark Cerny talks Dolby Atmos support for PlayStation 5. Uh, so uh, this is from uh, Richard, written by Richard over at Digital Foundry. Of course, they, they uh, work with Eurogamer or owned by Eurogamer. I don't know how it works. I can't remember. Anyway, in the wake of our reporting on PlayStation 5's new Dolby Atmos support in last week's DF Direct Weekly, Sony's marketing team got in touch with a response from PS5 lead system architect Mark Cerny on how the new surround sound setup actually works. In the Direct, we speculated that PS5's existing, existing very impressive Tempest 3 audio data was most likely being recalculated and injected into Dolby Atmos container. If you think about it, this is an innovative solution, but it's also the only way that the PS5's existing library of tiles can actually work with the Atmos setup in, uh, uh, set up as is until now. Developers would not have mastered audio support the 7.1.4 speaker system. Um, going on about it, I'll, well, hold on, I'll read Mark Cerny's bit here, which sounds very convoluted, and I'll break down why it's kind of cool. Uh, so he says... It's probably easy to talk about Tempest-based 3D audio and Dolby device support in terms of ambisonic audio, which is increasingly popular these days. Note that there are strategies for 3D audio, including one that uses discrete 3D audio objects, but the situation is rather similar. Um, blah, 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 blah. Up until the most recent update, Tempest Engine would render the information in the ambisonic channels into headphones, stereo TV speakers, and 5.1 and 7.1 audio setups. Now 7.1.4 has been introduced with four overhead speakers, but really nothing changes in the overall Tempest rendering strategy. The 34 ambisonic channels already include, include audio coming from all directions, including above the player. To put that differently, the support for of the four overhead speakers is first-class support they handle just like any other speakers. Also note the rendering latency for the new speaker setup is identical as it was being in the past for 5.1 and 7.1. Um, because they put they, so Digital Foundry put out a video last week saying, "Hey, it's all great and well and good for them Sony to announce um, Dolby Atmos support. This is fantastic. This is going to be really good." But how? And then they they didn't they were like theorizing on how it's going to work because. PlayStation, as anyone who paid attention to their marketing in the lead up to the PS5, had this big deal about their Tempest audio engine and uh, their systems aren't technically Dolby Atmos supported. And all the games, movies would be one thing, but all the games have their audio designed around and using this Tempest uh, audio system. So... Somehow, using magic is from what I can understand it. Watching the video, somehow Mark Cerny and the 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 whiz bang engineers over at PlayStation have somehow worked out how to get basically integrate Dolby Atmos into temp the Tempest engine. Which means that although it's not technically like we, it, the update is adding Dolby Atmos support as I as went over last week and said it's coming soon. It is adding Dolby Atmos support, but it's also sort of just adding in half of it on top of the Tempest engine, which means that it'll get the same effect, but it's like sort of a, a weird hybrid of PlayStation and Dolby Atmos, which is really weird. But also, um, if you watch the um, the Digital Foundry video, they've, they're quite impressed with how they managed to actually get this to, to work, considering it shouldn't work. Because PlayStation, like they always do, like to dig them, like, like we got this really cool tech and whatever else, but then when they, they sort of sometimes dig themselves into the holes as far as like technology and systems and stuff like that but it's really cool i'm really excited um i know you don't really care but you may care when could you play with your little headphones on and stuff like mm-hmm. that don't you? yeah so you, you they're, they're going to be supported yeah. and headphones are going to be supported you, uh, anything soundbar supported like all that sort of stuff so you, you will get the benefit of this now i don't know if your ears are better than your eyes and if you'll notice the difference but no. time will tell 
Do you, I don't know how you can't. You, I don't know what I can excite you with. I don't know what. I can't excite you. I understand some people don't care about audio things. Some people care about visual things, opposite and stuff like that. I can't excite you of anything visually or autophotically. Autof- I don't right. know if that's a real word, but. No, just give me the content. It doesn't matter if you can see it or hear it. Just give me the content, he says. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Um, but yeah, really excited for Dolby Atmos to come. Will be good, especially. Uh, means I can pl- uh, play more Blu-rays through my PlayStation and actually get proper sound support through them instead of using an Xbox. So, um, PlayStation Stars might finally be integrated into the PS5 soon. Right, push square. It looks as though PS5 ugh, PS Stars is finally heading to PS5. The loyalty scheme launched almost a year ago has been accessible exclusively by the PlayStation Mobile app since. However, Sony stated the functionality would eventually be built into the PS5 system software, allowing you to use it on your console directly. Now it appears we're getting closer to that date. As spotted by Twisted, Twisted Voxel, privacy settings for PS5 PS Stars have been added to PS5, presumably implemented in, implemented in a recent PS5 firmware update. These options allow you to set who can see a PS Stars level, as well as who can who as choose who can view your digital collectibles display case. Obviously, the fact that PS5 now has these settings suggests the loyalty program is on the approach. In addition to this, we've also noticed PS Stars adverts in the PlayStation 5's PS Store lately. Um. Obviously, this is P- 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 PlayStation Stars is an interesting thing because, like, when they announced it, it sounded like such a cool thing, and it hasn't really taken off. Here's my my well, no, I don't even want to say taken off because it's not like I feel like anyone uh, like I understand a lot of people aren't going to get into the the whole collectible digital thing or whatever else, but I didn't even re- we haven't I haven't even really seen anyone talk positively about the fact you now get points your purchases similar to nintendo and then you can use those to redeem for um you know gift cards and and stuff like that which is which is good like i haven't seen anyone ever talk about that at all as like just a base level feature and it makes me wonder if it's a thing that simply people don't check or care about because they have to use the playstation mobile app to do it so maybe if it's on the console more people will take advantage of it because if you're buying any game digitally you are racking up these points whether you yep. choose to to care about it or not. And you can redeem those points for lit, just straight up money for your next purchase, yep. <laughs> similar to Nintendo. So you could be missing out on getting some dollars off your next purchase. So, um, I mean, I go over on on here. I pay attention to it simply because I'm like, it's free money. <laughs> Sometimes I pop on and look at the the little collectibles and stuff like that and look at them for five seconds and go, oh, that's cool. I never care about it again, but, you know, I get my brief few seconds, but I oh, know. Do you reckon know more people will care about it if they can actually check their points on the PlayStation Store? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think, you know, I'm sure there's a large number of people who don't even have the PlayStation app on their phone. You know, they just go to their PlayStation, load up their Call of Duty, <laughs> and then start playing. Um, so if the occasional notification pops up on your actual PlayStation about PlayStation stars, you know, that might entice more people to get into it or do it a bit more. Or if you have like a slide on your menu bar that like shows you a showcase or whatever, you know, mm. a, a dedicated PlayStation star slide, you know, then I think people would be more invested in this program. Yeah, well, like I don't know where we're crazy the idea of actually putting it. It's like right in front of people might be more helpful Mm, than just having it locked away on this app, away from the games that you actually need to play to get the points. Do you think so? If they add it to the store, um, store if they add it to the PlayStation Five, where would they put it? How do you how do you access this? Like you're scrolling along your PS Five. I think you go- they'd probably have like a on the menu down the bottom. You'd have like next to your trophies or something like that, like in your profile, in, pop, yeah, like subsection thing, maybe, maybe. Because I think I think you click on your profile to get to your trophies and whatever else. So yeah, probably around there somewhere. Do you reckon they should have? I was trying to think what would be if you had a pop up. Like, you know, you get notifications. So you got a notification that said, hey, you have, uh, 
you have 1,000 un, unused points. That could be yep. $10 off your next purchase. Yep. I don't know what, but the thing is, I'm like, you're just helping out people But also, do they then. want to do that? <laughs> yeah, you're just helping people out then. Or, or should it just be up to people to be like, you know, care enough, and then the reward is you can get your your, point, yeah. your money off. So, I don't know, because PlayStation doesn't get, it's not like they're getting money out of this. I mean, people may spend more money to, if they realize they get points. I don't know, psychologically, but whatever. Uh, all right, so... Here's my favorite, art, well, not article. This is my favorite thread I spotted on Reset Era this week that I saved because <laughs> the just the, the, the uh, headline caught my attention straight away. So Reset Era, someone wrote, Hideo Kojima says Death Stranding 2 will redefine Strand. I was like, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> so this finally, usually, <laughs> I know it this, was being... this this genre has been demanding a reinvention. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. And I'll, I'll go into this. So they, they linked this Kotaku article, and I'll go into that in a sec. But I just want to say that, that this is where I originally saw it, and I like how <laughs> my favorite, just reading through the responses, it's like, can't wait. I wish I could scam people like this. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Someone else, fuck yeah, strands that separate. <laughs> I still, like, dude, no way. <laughs> I, was just, I, I think I scrolled through this really early in the morning. I was like, oh, no. He's a, he's a, this fucking Fred is a bunch of smart asses. Anyway, like, that is, isn't that uh, all reset error? Yeah, true. true, true. Oh, uh, yeah, internet, I guess. Taki, Hideo Stranding. So, in a recent interview of Japanese publication Music Nat- Natalie? Sure. Death Stranding director Hideo Kojima revealed that his upcoming sequel, Death Stranding 2, will revisit the meaning of the word strand because of the COVID pandemic. After Kojima first revealed the teaser trailer for Death Stranding 2 at last year's Game Awards, he revealed that he already begun writing DS2 story before the pandemic hit. But after living through its eerily similar similar world, he went back to the drawing board with writing the sequel. Kojima elaborated on restructuring DS2 story, saying, At the beginning, there was a lot of... The theme was of connecting. And after that, I made a lot of notes about character settings, game ideas, and so on. Like how to connect it. I put it together while maintaining a balance. But I had to rewrite everything because of Corona. In Death Stranding, it was just it was just, <laughs> it was justice to connect. But with the Corona crisis, a pseudo connections such as remotes have come to be emphasised. On the other hand, I felt that such pseudo connections alone would not lead to fulfilling human lives. After all, humans need to go out into the outside world and move. What do you reckon, Ash? I don't know. I, I don't think people <laughs> need to go outside and move. You I mean, need to go into the outside world and moves. Moves. That's antithetical to making video games, right? <laughs> don't you want people? Okay. That's a good point, I guess. Um. <laughs> Kotaku Rinners continues. Aside from Strand being in the title of the game, Kojima uses the noun variation of the word to represent the shore of a beach, the verb meaning to leave someone somewhere, and even coined his own definition of Death Stranding's genre as a strand type game, which loosely means that it is a video game where players can work together towards completing common goals for its online function, even if they aren't playing together. It's all kind of exhausting when you sit and stew on it, but basically all you need, all you need to know is that Kojima loves his homonyms and he doesn't show any sign of slowing down with death stranding 2 that was my favorite i just like how reading any kojima quote you go ah oh, fuck it. surely if i listen to it like if i if i went and found it and heard him say that it would make more sense and the answer like, is nope. nah no it would not because every word <laughs> can have a double meaning you know, <laughs> you know? like rogers yeah it has multiple meanings but only one that matters. Only one that matters, true. All right, PlayStation Productions for this week. Uh, After, I think, last week, I was like, oh, maybe Uncharted will be happening soon. Apparently it will. So Eurogamer says, film producer Charles Roven is definitely looking to make another Uncharted film uh, adaptation. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Roven was asked if there's a desire to continue the film franchise after its impressive box office success. Saying, quote, oh yeah, we had a really good time with that movie. 
Fans really liked the movie, and the people who didn't know anything about the game really liked the movie. So we're definitely looking forward to making another one of those. The film made over $100 million at the box office globally in its first weekend. Well, but it made over $407 million. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Do you reckon... What do you reckon... So, at the end... Yes. We have this whole teaser. We got the Chloe thing. Blah, 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 blah. Cool. Do you think that they actually... Here's Because I read this, and I was like... Will they actually pick up from that moment, or that was it, that will just be a nah? No, nah, we'll forget about it. We'll diverge, you know, go in a different direction. Um, uh, maybe <laughs> it's 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 like so far out. There's no one involved. There's no scripts. You know, they could go pretty much any direction. Do they want to well closely follow the video games, or do they want to go? You know, I think they've already decided they don't. They don't need to closely follow the video games. I think that's already been set. And they can't do Uncharted 2 because Mission Impossible just did it, so. Do it anyway. <laughs> They'll yeah. do it worse, it's though. Different enough. <laughs> ah, but there's snow in that one, so it's different. True. That would yeah. be the really defining factor. Very good. Yeah, it's cold. <laughs> Um, the only other thing I was going to bring up in this section before we wrap up for today is I have seen a lot more over the last couple of weeks uh, positive reaction to Twisted Metal. Have you seen this? Yes. Did you see that uh, Twisted Metal became Peacock's most binge comedy premiere to date? Yep. So what does it say about Peacock? Not much on Peacock. <laughs> <laughs> I have found it quite funny because I've seen so many people now and even heard on a few podcasts I've listened to where people have said, like, oh, I was just going to check it out or, like, people tweeting stuff, like, I was just going to tweet, tweet uh, check it out. And I, I just kind of, I kept watching. I was like, wow, this is actually, like, good. Yeah, it's just very watchable. It is very watchable. That's the, it's, it's, it's the surprise show of the year, I think. So, do you reckon, so we... A lot of people are saying it definitely won't get another season because Peacock's pro- probably going to die. I, and I think know. we talked about it. But... <laughs> I mean, you know, based on those numbers, you would say probably it would get another season, assuming Peacock doesn't die. Um, or someone else would go, oh, those numbers are pretty good. Let's you know, yeah. pick it up. You know, that's what, Or that's what NBC I'm goes, hey, let's put it on actual television. TV. I'm okay. assuming it's something of the former. So after now, I was a little bit wary before, and like I'm on the assumption that Peacock's probably going to die as a as a place. But given that, I assume it will be a thing of okay, Peacock dies anyway, but someone just picks it up on the basis that the show did really well anyway. Because I d- mm. I don't think the show doing any really well has anything to do with the f- like people could if they wanted to, and I think they're hundred percent wrong. T- twisted in a oh, it only got viewed so much because there's nothing else on Peacock. I'm like, no one's scrolling through Peacock trying to justify that. No, no one's only like, only subscribed to Peacock, you know? Yes. Peacock so, is the only choice Yeah, for, for television. No, so I don't, I don't think that's a thing. People people who are watching it were choosing to watch it. It wasn't they're because they're... Seeking it out, yes. Yeah, they're seeking it out. So I think that should be more than enough reason for, for someone else to pick it up and... Um, I mean, I, every time I've seen a clip, I, yeah, I just want to say, again, reiterate this, because I'm going to stand by it for the rest of it. That show is a lot of fun. I don't think it's a great show, by any means. It is a lot of fun, though. And any time I've seen a clip post up on Twitter, I'm just reminded, I'm like, man, people mm. in that show are having a good time, I feel. Like, the, the actors and everything, like, it's just, yep. everyone got to have a, a, a wild sort of ride. It was just fun. So I, I'm, I'm hoping for more. Uncharted 2? I'd rather twist the metal. <laughs> to be completely honest, I would rather twist the metal you know. over a uh, uh, Uncharted sequel. To be, do you reckon? I, I know. Do you reckon Tom Holland would actually want to come back? I hope not. I mean, what? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> do you know, I he sounded so disappointed with what the, the experience of the first film is like. Would he come back? Do you recast? Who cares? Unless they cast an open feeling, and everyone's just going to be annoyed anyway. Massive time jump to the future. <laughs> yeah, let's jump ahead like fucking 30 years. So. <laughs> they recast Mark Wahlberg too while you're at it. Because he looks oh, you'd have to. Well, no. Have you been the same? <laughs> True. Yeah, maybe they just keep the same. They just take some makeup off of him. 
Or the, yeah, no, you have some magical. He touches some magical artifact that ages him thirty years, so he can be Nathan Fillion, and then it's just a Nathan Fillion Mark Wahlberg adventure. Sure, <laughs> whatever. Okay, whatever. Tom Holland to be in it for five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Flashback. I don't know. All right. That'll do it for this week's episode of Platinum Stories. Of course, let us know any comments, questions, concerns, thoughts you've had on anything we've talked about this week by going over to our X at explosionnetwork.com slash Twitter. Join our Discord, explosionnetwork.com slash Discord. And if you want to support the show and or explosionnetwork.com, head on over to our Kofi page, explosionnetwork.com slash support. And until next week, remember, every trophy counts.